Happiness is a fat stack of comics and a bag of your favorite munchies. We brought the comics. What did you bring? I was a single man when the last issue of this comic book came out, but finally, Kick-Ass 6 hits your shelves. And this continues the run of quality that Kick-Ass has represented, it, represented since it first um, debuted. This is a great book. Ramita's pencils are beautiful as ever. And um, if you don't know about Kick-Ass, the best way to kind of describe it is like, if you imagine one of those kind of cheesy reality shows that you see on TV all of the time, imagine there was one about a guy who actually wanted to be a superhero, got his own costume and went out and did that. That's basically essentially what's going on here in Kick-Ass. And what we get in issue six, if I don't, I don't want to blow the gaffer for anybody, but we get a major betrayal in this issue. That's the big kind of landmark event in issue six of Kick-Ass. So if you want to know all about what's going on in the newest superhero on the blocks kind of life, you need this book in your life, Kick-Ass issue six. This is going to be massive. So also out after a little bit of a wait is this, Batman Detective Comics issue number eight, Five, three. This is Whatever Happened to the Cape Crusader, part two, written by Neil Gaiman and drawn by Andy Cuba. This is a beautiful looking book. Um, what exactly we're supposed to get from this, I'm not entirely sure. We seem to um, share a near-death experience with Bruce Wayne and get caught up in some sort of circle of life um, sort of scenario, much like the Lion King uh, in this book. And it's, it's, it's good stuff. But I'm not, sure, I'm not entirely sure what I'm supposed to take from this. I'm not sure. I can't tell you what the state of the bat universe is at the moment off the back of this book. I just know there's some real clever stuff going on here between Gaiman and Cuba. And at some point, someone bright will sit me down and explain to me that um, Batman is not very well and he's, or he's being held captive by someone or he's, you know, it's all a dream, much like they did in Dallas. I don't know what it's going to be yet. Um, I'm not clever enough to speculate, but if you want to have any sort of a clue of what's going on on the bleeding edge of the Bat universe, then you're, you're going to need this book. This is Batman 853 Detective Comics. It's on your shelves this week. <laughs> So this is Daredevil, Man Without Fear, issue number 118. This sees the continuation of the Return of the King story arc. And essentially what's happening here is Matt Murdock, the Daredevil, is teaming up with Wilson Fisk, the kingpin of crime, in order to deal with the hand with whom they both have issues. But can Matt Murdock's integrity survive a super team-up with possibly one of the greatest villains in the Marvel Universe. It's all unfolding here, and Brubaker is doing a beautiful job of creating a kind of slightly noirish, um, very angsty version of um, Daredevil, as he's described in here by Master Izzo. He's probably the most whiny superhero you've ever seen at the moment, but it's still compelling stuff. So if you have any interest in Daredevil, you'll definitely want this. Daredevil, Man Without Fear, issue 118 on your shelves this week. When I first started following the run of Jeff Loeb on the Hulk with the Red Hulk versus the Green Hulk type of stuff, I was very, very optimistic. I was really enjoying it. It's starting to tail off a little bit for me as we find the Red Hulk's offenders team pitched against the Green Hulk's defenders team in some sort of kind of uh, miniature Hulk themed secret wars type of scenario. Um, yeah, I think this might be, and, like, and forgive me if I'm wrong about this, but this might be Jeff Loeb's Hulk jumping the shark moment in that I mean, I know it's very, very hard to argue in a series that the Hulk, that something's too, just too outlandish and just too far, but this isn't as much fun as it was uh, maybe five or six issues ago. So um, it's well worth checking out still, but not my favourite book of the week. This is the Hulk um, issue number 11. It's on your shelves now. Finally hitting your shelf this week, Skull Kill Crew. This is another Dark Rain offshoot. First issue of a five-part mini-series hitting your shelves this week. Dark Rain also continues in issue number 24 of The Mighty Avengers. 
If you're a follower of the Fantastic Four, you may well re remember seeing the origin of this book in that book. This is Fantastic Force, a five-part mini-series. Um, that's going to be worth checking out for sure. Electra, the first issue was really, really good. So issue two is um, happily welcome to the shelves this week. For all of those fans of Spider-Man who are enjoying getting regular amazing Spider-Man action, issue 592 hits your shelves. Thor's banishment from his home continues in Thor issue number 601. There's more Dark Reign action in the new Avengers issue number 52. That's out this week. And also the beautiful Marvel's Eye of the Camera issue 5 of 6 hits the shelves this week. So that's pretty much all we've got time for this week at Fantastic Realm. Make sure you keep rating us and sending us your questions and your comments. And don't forget, if you're feeling the show, let somebody know. Now get out of here and do something else. Go on, sing it. I've had enough of you. You can buy any of the books we reviewed at fantasticrealm.co.uk and don't forget to quote the code FAN1 to get yourself a 10% discount. You can also check us out at our eBay store and see more videos or join our online communities at Facebook, MySpace and YouTube. We've now launched the Fantastic Realm video podcast on iTunes, so feel free to add a comment about this video below and don't forget you can drop by the store to check out what we've got in stock.